was asked by uh, Thomas to to uh, help with the keynote here, and when I heard that Richard is coming, I was sure he will be able to cover the whole history of PDF much better than I. So I decided, since I only have 15 minutes, I decided to 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 limit my presentation to my personal milestones in PDF, which might not be the same than Richard ones. So uh, let me let me start with that. So the title I changed slightly. It's 27 years of PDF. And I, I decided, usually I do a lot of text bullet points, etc. And for this for this time, I, uh, I I decided to use pictures. So I I went to my archives and went back and found that, that name badge I found and the, uh, the, uh, the first PDF book still, and uh, I, I, I used to work with that. It's full of marks, and I find a lot of other things. I took pictures of it and uh, uh, brought it to you. So each, each picture has a link. When you click on the picture, then uh, you, you are brought to a website where there is additional information or a document or whatever. So, so as I said, my first contact with the, the concept of PDF, at that time it was, it was called differently, was at the CIPO conference in, in, in San Jose, where John Warnock also made a demo. He, he, he took a, a, a whole uh, page of a, of a trade magazine, I think it was Compute to Week, and uh, on a Mac, and then saved it to a floppy, took the floppy to a, a Windows PC and opened it, and everything was there, the fonts, the colors, the pictures, and that was unbelievable at that time. Because I was happy if I could take a, a, an ASCII text from a Mac to a Windows machine and had to even convert the, the special characters, and that was the, the, the best thing you could do, but uh, forget about typography or about fonts, that was impossible. And with this, I, I had the belief in my, in my stomach, this is going to be important for, for my future professional life in print production, so I, I decided to follow that te technology very closely. At that event, Adobe presented a white paper with the, we called Interchange Postscript, and that's how the, the vision was that based on Postscript there should be a document format which carried all the information necessary to, to open, to view, and to print this document. Not more. There was no, no discussion about editing or stuff like that. It was just about uh, transporting the, the, the a rich document from one computer to a completely different computer. A year later, I got invited to uh, the Carousel Beta program from Adobe, and I still have a copy of Carousel on my Cyquist. I don't have a Cyquist device anymore, and I probably uh, know for sure I, I would not be able to install that application on today's computer, but that's when, when, when the whole thing started. Then a year later, Acrobat uh, 1.0 came out, and for the younger ones, the, the little things on the, in the foreground, that's how software used to be distributed 25 years ago. <laughs> so I have still these boxes and all, all, the, all the other boxes of the Acrobat uh, applications, of course, uh, in, in my archive. And as I have shown you, I still have the, uh, the uh, PDF reference manual, where on, on the, the second page, there are two names listed as the authors. It's Tim Beans and Richard Cohn, which is with us today. So I, I will let you sign my, my book afterwards. <laughs> I usually don't do that, but I think that's a good, that's a good opportunity uh, to, uh, if you are here with us today. But the problem with PDF at the beginning, it was not meant for print production. It was meant for office. And, uh, so if you had CMYK color, for instance, in your PostScript file, they still converted everything into RGB. So it was useless for print production except for black and white pages. That changed with PDF 1.2 in 1996, where CMYK and spot colors uh, were possible. But that was not enough for us. There was still things which were not possible, and uh, that uh, led to an initiative from Olaf Drümmer from Kalas, which most of you know. He invited a couple of pre-press experts from Germany and Switzerland to a PDF roundtable, and we decided to create a white paper where we list all the issues we had, the missing things, the broken things uh, in a PDF workflow for print production. 
And uh, we, ha we had, Olaf and myself, we had the opportunity to present this white paper at the Seabolt Seminars in Boston in March 1998. So that's 20 years ago. Uh, and this uh, white paper they had quite a good uh, uh, feedback in the industry. So Adobe took care of a lot of the things. Other vendors came up with, uh, with tools and, and with uh, solutions for the, uh, for the issues we have listed there. And uh, so PDF workflow started uh, in, in print production as well. Uh, I was asked by Heidelberg and Creo, who prepared the launch of the first real PDF workflow systems for, for uh, CTP production, for compute to play production, to, uh, to help them with the launch of their product to, to, to explain what PDF is all about. And I created four tutorials for them, and, and, there were, and we counted more than one million downloads of these brochures. And there were a couple of 10,000 copies were printed and distributed. So this, this was quite a successful thing. I still have a couple of hundred downloads every year, so uh, people still get to that to these brochures. They are still on my website, so if you click on that link, you will get directed to these brochures. So they, they're real, they look like this. Uh, I still have a couple of hundred copies at home. <laughs> and um, so uh, that was quite, quite a successful thing. A lot of these issues we mentioned in this uh, white paper was, was uh, also taken care of with PDF 1.3, which brought the full compatibility with PostScript 3, and that was the, the best you could have uh, from layout application. They all, the out, the, their output all went to, P, uh, to PostScript, and then the PostScript was, was converted to PDF. There was no direct export as we, as we know it today. And so, with PDF 1.3, we were happy with everything which we could do with, with a PostScript workflow. We could do also with a, with a, with a PDF workflow. Uh, every PDF 1.3 could be converted to PostScript 3 without any loss. And, and that, was, that was quite good. That was also the base of uh, the first ISO standards uh, based on PDF, which were PDF X1A and PDF X3, uh, which took care of, of some other issues we mentioned in our white paper, like the page bounding box, uh, the page geometry boxes or trapping key, these kind of things were first invented at the ISO and later picked up by Adobe in PDF 1.4. But in the meantime, technology developed, PDF developed. There was PDF 1.4 brought transparency, 1.5 brought layers, 1.6 with, with uh, um, uh, JPEG 2000 compression, for instance, or open type fonts. And that meant that PDF X1A and X3, still based on PDF 1.3, they could not cover all the new things which were possible in layout applications like Illustrator or InDesign. And that's why we decided at the ISO committee that we should have a new variant of PDF X, which uh, was PDF X4, which 10 years ago, so there's another anniversary to celebrate tonight, 10 years ago in 20, 2008, PDF X6 was released, uh, PDF X4 was released. PDF X6 I come, I come to later. The problem with these technologies today, at least in, in, in printing, is that the adoption by the users is very, very slow. I did a survey two years ago on my blog and asked uh, the readers uh, which PDF format they prefer. And we see that only about uh, less than 40% uh, prefer PDF X4, and the rest still use older formats. And that hasn't changed since then. And that's a little bit the problem that all the new things we, we, we come out and we invest a lot of time and money in it, that the adoption at the user base is, is, is very, very, very slow. So I, I fear uh, I will be retired for a long time when PDF 1.0 will arrive at, at, at the, print in the printing industry. And that's a little bit the problem I see, that people think, yeah, we, PDF is great, we do that since 10 years or since 15 years, and uh, they see no, no, no reason to change. There's that they have new new versions of their layout programs with new features, etc., and, and their their customers, the graphic designer, use them, of course, and but they still stick with PDF 
1.3 and PDF x one a if you're lucky. And that's the problem uh, we face in, in daily production that a lot of jobs fail because the wrong format is used. Nevertheless, in the ISO committee, we are working hard on a, a new variant of PDFX, which is PDFX6, which is scheduled to be released next year. Uh, and this will be based on PDF 2.0 and, and have a few uh, new features in it, not, not groundbreaking, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good, good evolution of, of this standard. And uh, I hope that the, the industry will be able to uh, adopt that as soon as possible. So that's it, my 10 minutes. Thank you very much.